They said Liverpool had an easy run of games, they said that Chelsea are going to put an end to our winning streak, and then it was Arsenal who were going to expose Arne's slot and his tactics at the Emirates. Well, guess what? The Reds have returned from London with a very important point, coming back from behind two times against Mikel Arteta's side. Now, we can all agree that the performance wasn't particularly good, especially in the first half. However, it's safe to say that this point was earned rather than two lost especially with the game on enemy grounds, and with the Reds taking almost 60 minutes of playing time to get into the match. So if you somehow missed out on the game, or you want to learn and understand the tactical key points and moments of the match, then this video is for you. So hit that like and subscribe button, and let's jump straight into our analysis. So as we already learned by now, Arne Slot does not like to make multiple shifts to his starting 11. Still, he made one big change to the team, that actually got us confused here at Penenka, and later proved to be a miss hit as the game unfolded. So let's go over the team sheet quickly. As expected, Kelleher started in goal with Allison still absent. The back four had one change with Robertson returning to the starting 11, with all of Virgil van Dijk, Ibrahim Kanate, and Trent Alexander-Arnold keeping their places. The midfield is where the big change we talked about comes in. Both Ryan Gravenberg and Alexis McAllister started the game, but it was Dominic Sabozlai who got benched in favour for Curtis Jones. Now don't get us wrong, we already posted a video explaining why Jones should be starting these big games alongside Gravenberg in the pivot. However, we highlighted that it should be ahead of McAllister in such clashes, and that Sabozlai should keep his place. If you're wondering why, go ahead and watch the video, but if you don't have the time, stick around because we're going to explain what exactly happened. Going back to the front line, Luis Diaz returned to the left wing position while both Darwin Nunes and Mo Salah kept their places. Now that we've covered the starting team, let us jump into what actually happened in the game. Although it might have been a bit too dangerous, we still wanted Arne Slot to go into this game choosing the same pressing structure and intensity that he used against RB Leipzig. In that game, plenty of the issues of central spaces were limited, and we arguably had one of our best performances without the ball. Unfortunately, the manager decided to return to the passive 4-2-4 block, and that's how we started our game. You can see here that both Curtis Jones and Darwin Nunes led the press from central areas, with Salah and Diaz staying wide, and Graham Burke and McAllister behind them to maintain the 4-2-4 shape. However, similar to how Chelsea exploited this structure, Arsenal managed to pull our pivot players wide using Havertz who dropped deep and Timber who pushed up, creating more space for the likes of Rice, Moreno and even Trossard who acted as a false nine to receive the ball in central spaces. But that didn't stop there. Arsenal were also able of playing around the block rather than through it, and that's because the pivot players, notably McAllister, struggled to keep up with Havertz's movement on the left-hand side, being torn between following him there or covering the central areas. Now, although it might not be obvious, but Saka's opening goal can give a clear picture on how White was able to play a long ball around our defensive structure, all while targeting Andy Robertson, who didn't only mine his own defensive line, but also struggled to contain Saka in the penalty box. Thankfully, this goal actually changed how we approached the game defensively, and once we trailed and sensed the danger, we took more of a front-footed pressing method, similar to the RB Leipzig game. The team lined up in a more 4-2-3-1, with Darwin leading the charge and wide players denying Arsenal progression on the flanks. Jones followed up with Maka and Gravenberg behind him, and with us going more aggressively, we started to get into the game gaining more control with and without the ball. In fact, the corner which led to our equaliser actually came after we won the ball high in Arsenal's defensive third, which shows how important an active first line of pressing can be. Now speaking of our equaliser, it looks like set pieces are going to be a huge weapon for us this season. Using Virgil van Dijk and Ibrahima Kanate as aerial threats has been proving to be a great tool in the attack in this game. It was our captain who scored the first one with a great headed effort. And by the way, we just mentioned Kanate, but we're not going to talk about him now. We're going to save him for later because he was absolutely sensational. Now going back into the game, momentum shifted once again in Arsenal's favour, because it looked like our block dropped a bit deep as we stopped pressing aggressively. Now if you guys are interested in an in-depth video talking exactly about why Arne Slot needs to ditch the 4-2-4 structure out of possession, make sure you let us know in the comments and we'll do it as quickly as possible. So again, Arsenal were on the wheels as they regained control over the game and as half-time whistle approached, the inevitable happened. 
The Gunners also scored from a set piece, which we need to give them credit for because Arteta has turned them into one of the best teams in the world when it comes to creating and scoring chances from free kicks. Now in addition to our structure without the ball, there was another issue we spotted in the first period. See, we felt like Liverpool players, notably the back line and Callagher, were not patient enough in baiting Arsenal's pressing, and rather went for the long ball too quick instead. That didn't create any space for the front line to exploit, and with Darwin Nunes making runs on Gabriel's side instead of Ben White, we struggled to progress the ball through the phases and actually cause much of a threat. Whether that was an instruction from the manager or the players deciding to act that way, we believe that this kind of approach will never work against a top side like Arsenal, and that's mainly why Liverpool didn't look good in the first half. Now the second half was when Liverpool stepped up. Not only did we press higher as we chased the game, but there was a particular change that brought more life to the team, helping us put more intensity with and without the ball. It was around the hour mark that Dominic Sabozlai got in instead of Alexis McAllister to form the midfield trio, and this is when the team started to click. Alongside Curtis Jones, Sabozlai brought more intensity and dueling without the ball, and for a first touch, Sabozlai dropped deep into midfield, dragged Declan Rice out of possession before faking his turn and bursting with speed while carrying the ball higher up the pitch. This is exactly why we said Curtis Jones and Dominic Sabozlai should both be starting games. The two players are incredible athletes that also provide different skills on the ball. Jones can retain it under the press and essentially receive a pass anywhere on the pitch, while Dom has an incredible running power that can help him break opposition lines like a ball and carry it into dangerous areas. That's exactly what gave Liverpool that extra boost in the second period, with Sabozlai on the pitch. But those players we mentioned were not the only ones on why we got a point from the Emirates. While all of Trent, Darwin and Salah deserve all the praise for the second goal we scored, there's one man that deserves the Man of the Match award in our eyes. Yes, it is Ibrahim Kanate. See, if it wasn't for the Frenchman making a great recovery run to anticipate a ball to Martinelli, Trent wouldn't have launched that beautiful long pass towards Nunes to grab the assist. In fact, Kanate actually put that right-hand side on lockdown, completely nullifying Martinelli's runs in behind, winning three out of his three ground jewels and making six box clearances. It's safe to say that if it wasn't for Kanate being on his day, one point from the Emirates might have been an extremely difficult task to do. It's good to know that despite not performing too good for the majority of a game and going down twice, this team can still fight back and dig deep to get back into a match. That doesn't mean that Slot and his players have nothing to fix for the remainder of the campaign, absolutely not. So what are your thoughts about the performance? Was it a one point earned or two points dropped? Should we rotate the team for our next match against Brighton in the Cup before we face them again in the league a few days later? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed today's match analysis, why not hit that like and subscribe button for more Liverpool content. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.